Madam President of the Republic, Dilma Rousseff, Minister Campello, Minister Diaz, Minister Figueiredo, representatives of government, of workers and of employers, representatives of civil society, dear friends, let me be the first to welcome you all to this third global conference on child labour. Together, you have come from no less than 152 member states of the ILO. Governments are represented here, 37 of them by ministers. The ILO's employers and workers' constituents are here to meet representative and show their commitment. And we are joined as well by our civil society partners whose cooperation is so important for the work that we do. Thank you all for being here. And it is not by accident, not by accident, that we are in this city, the capital of a country which has made the elimination of child labour a central component of its national policies to create a Brazil without misery and of its national plan for decent work. Brazil is the living demonstration of the results that political will, the right policies, tripartite commitment and global leadership can bring to the fight against child labour. Madam President, thank you not only for the invitation and for Brazil's hospitality, thank you for the example, the example and the inspiration that you and your colleagues are providing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I see this conference as a key milestone on the long march, the long march to a world free of child labor. The latest stage of that march has brought us from the last global conference in The Hague in 2010, here to Brasilia today. We have come a considerable distance in these years, and let me acknowledge the presence of Minister Plowman of the Netherlands and thank her for the leadership demonstrated by the Netherlands, which furnished us with the Hague Roadmap to help us find our way. But what we must achieve this week is a clear vision of what we must do next, and also the joint commitment to get us there. We will take the Brasilia Declaration from here, and I believe it will be a critical tool for us all. But truly, our prospects to bring our long march to its successful destination depends on more than that. It depends on our capacity to mobilize, to mobilize our governments, our respective organizations, our citizens, to do what we know can be done. Madam President, in the coming years, Brazil will host sporting events that will grasp the attention of the whole world. It will raise hopes. They will provide inspiration they will provide exhilaration for some and disappointment for others. Well, I want this conference to have the same ambitions. We cannot realistically be less ambitious. I hope, ladies and gentlemen, that you have read the ILO's latest reports on global <laughs> estimates and trends on child labour. And if you've read it, you already know the bottom line. The new number is 168 million child laborers. That's the bad news. In this year of 2013, no less than 168 million children are still trapped in child labor, half of them in its worst forms. Just think, that is just 27 million less 
than the entire population of Brazil. It is 168 million too many and 168 million reasons for us all being here in Brasilia today. But there's good news as well. That figure is one third lower than when we first started counting child laborers a decade ago. 78 million fewer than in 2000. 47 million fewer than in 2008. <coughs> so we have witnessed a real acceleration in progress. And I think that we need to reflect on these trends. We need to exchange experience to learn lessons and provide direction and impetus for the challenges ahead. The remarkable progress that we have made together shows that we can think strategically, that we are capable of acting, and that if we act all together, we can bring profound changes to the lives of hundreds of millions of girls and boys around the world. It's worth remembering, just 20 years ago, many countries denied that they had a child labor problem. 20 years ago, we were told consistently that ILO Conventions 138 on minimum work were unratifiable. Well, now it has 166 ratifications. And Convention 182 on the worst forms of child labor has 177 ratifications. That's just nine away from universal ratification. For the first time, the ILO is presenting estimates of child labor for different levels of national income. You will not be surprised that the highest levels of child labor are in the poorest countries. But we should reflect as well on the fact that most children are at work in middle income countries. And that even middle income households have children that work. We need to work out why this is and we need to act on the reasons. If you look at the sectoral breakdown, we know that most children are at work in the agricultural sector still. The child labor is on the increase in the services sector, and one fifth of child labor in services are in domestic employment, which requires our political attention. Look at the gender dimension. Child labor for girls is down 40%, 40% since we started counting. For boys, it's only 25%. We need gender sensitive approaches as well. In regional terms, the largest number of children, child laborers, is still to be found in the Asia and Pacific region. But there, the numbers are coming down the fastest. It is sub-Saharan Africa, which continues to be the region where the highest proportion of children, more than one in five, are at work. And we need to focus carefully on Africa. Our long march must pass as well through Africa. But ladies and gentlemen, we are doing better. We have the ILO's Global Action Plan, incorporating the Hague Roadmap. Sister international organizations, such as the Food and Agricultural Organization, are playing their role. The ILO's International Program for the Elimination of Child Labor has remained strong in technical advice and cooperation. Our partners in civil society are vigilant in an effective in their advocacy, and donors are becoming more strategic. But perhaps most important of all, governments are taking their responsibility in cooperation with the social partners. 
We are seeing child labour concerns mainstreamed in public policy. We are seeing greater clarity about the need for better school to work transition. We see a new global consensus led by Brazil on ensuring social protection clause for all people. We see greater understanding that decent work for adults and for youth of working age is a necessity if we are to ensure family incomes that do not rely on child labour. And we see also that child labour undermines decent work and decent wages for adults. We see greater understanding that child labour exists predominantly in unpaid family work, in agriculture, formal and informal. It doesn't mean we should ignore children in paid employment elsewhere, but it's important to realise. We see enterprises and trade unions taking on board more than ever before the challenges of the informal economy. And we see labour inspection and agricultural extension services rising too to the challenges. And perhaps of enormous importance is that we see education ministries working to fulfil the obligation to ensure universal access to compulsory formal education for all children up to the minimum age of work. We need to improve the quality of education to ensure that decent learning and decent work for teachers is part of our struggle. Our good friend from India, Kailash. Our good friend from India, Kailash, has told us repeatedly, we won't eliminate child labour until we have universal education, and we won't get every child into school until we eliminate child labour. He's right. We are seeing the development of national action plans on child labour, linked increasingly to national decent work and development agenda. We are seeing better enforcement, social protection, education for all, and these are the foundation stones of effective action. Now, let us be clear. We have set ourselves 10 years ago the target of reaching, in 2006, excuse me, the target of eliminating the worst forms of child labour by 2016. On the current rate of progress, we will not meet that target. And that is a collective policy failure. We have to do better. Martin Luther King spoke to each and every one of us here when he said that the arc of history is long, but it bends towards freedom. We have to bend it a bit more strongly. We have to bend it a bit more quickly because we have to renew our commitment to eliminating the worst forms of child labor as quickly as possible. So I take the opportunity provided by this platform to call on the remaining member states which have not ratified Conventions 138 and 182 to do so. I had hoped that I could announce from Brasilia the universal ratification of Convention 182 on the worst forms of child labour. I cannot do that. There are nine countries left. But let's make it our target to do it before our next conference. Ladies and gentlemen, Madam President, at a moment when the world is fixing its development agenda post-215, with the central aim of eliminating extreme poverty, it is for us to set our target on a world free of child labour. This is not utopian today. This is not dreaming. We are here to elaborate strategic action that will end child labour. We must prepare 
our plans and not our excuses. So let me just end by making one point which I believe is particularly important. It is true that every individual here, minister, trade union or employer leader, civil society activist, has an individual responsibility. But above that, we have a combined, collective, global responsibility. We need to act in unison and in solidarity in a global movement. This is the sense of Article 8 of Convention 182, which I'm going to quote. It says that members of the ILO shall take appropriate steps to assist one another in giving effect to this convention through enhanced international cooperation and assistance, including support for social and economic development, poverty eradication programs, and universal education. That convention is a call to international solidarity. It also gives meaning to the ILO's program for the elimination of child labor. There is a danger, ladies and gentlemen, that even as we enter what should be the last kilometers of the long march against child labor, that the international community turns its attention away from ending this struggle, and then we stop before the end. From Brasilia, we have to say that that will not happen. The call from Brasilia must be for renewed collective effort. Please make that call. The ILO will be with you. I wish this third global conference all success. I thank you.